Hello, I'm Joe Rimmelsbach in the Department of Plant Pathology here at Ohio State University. And summer has arrived. It's nice and warm and humid, and of course us pathologists are delighted because this means that the environmental conditions have shifted from growing beautiful cool season grasses to growing beautiful fungi pathogens. Um, I just want to mention a little bit on sampling right before I forget it. Um, these are a couple golf samples we've gotten in recently, and I'm going to talk both about anthracnose and some about dollar spot. But if you're sending samples in, you can go to our website. It has very detailed information, even a little video on how to collect samples, either from a, a golf green or from high-cut turf. And uh, the key is to really give us information. Um, you can leave a voice message. You can send photos. But the more information we have, the better we can uh, help you usually with these situations. So uh, if you have any questions, check on those or give us a call. Okay, today I, on, on the golf side, I'd like to talk about two diseases primarily. Uh, anthracnose basal rot, which we've gotten several samples in from around the state recently, and also dollar spot um, from the situation where people have been concerned with materials not working at, or not working effectively and not getting recovery. On the anthracnose side, I'm very concerned uh, from the situations that we've gotten in because they're extensive and it's early in the season. And this is not a nice disease to have. Being early in the season like this, there's a lot of potential for hot, humid summer conditions where this will flourish. So in light of that, uh, we, we made this uh, handout. I updated it slightly, Brian will post it. Um, but a couple of things I want to mention or really focus on would be, um, we, we changed kind of the terminology. We talk about preventative disease control, and this should have been started a few weeks ago with preventative uh, effective fungicide applications and also managing the turf for maximum health. Then we used to talk about curative programs or curative approaches, and I'm changing the terminology there because we really don't cure the disease. Once it's in those crowns of the plant, they are going to have it. You aren't going to eradicate it. So I'm changing the wording to post-infection or post-disease. So if you're in a situation where you have basal rot anthracnose, you're in the post-condition scenario. In light of this, you want to be very cognizant that you're in a two, kind of a two-phase strategy. First, you want to stop the advance of the disease fungi. Um, the colototricum, but just as important, you have to manage for turf growth and recovery. And so if you have substantial damage thinning, it's going to be, it's going to be challenging, and we give a lot of pointers in here on how to deal with that. Um, as far as uh, fungicides, there's different classes you can use. You know, of course, the contact, make sure you're using um, chlorothalonil and you can use it fairly liberal with this disease. It's very important since it's a contact. Always remember that you want to put it on at two gallons per thousand or less. And that's very important because this disease is in the crown down at the base of the plant. So your materials that are going to actually penetrate that area you have to target at that site. So usually you have to, we always recommend higher volumes of water four to five gallons is ideal to drench it down into the base of the plant. Now that can be done with high volumes of spray equipment or say if you are, have a standard of two gallons per thousand, you can put half the rate of fungicide and then double spray the greens. And of course with this, those applications you do not want to have your chlorothalonil or contact product in there at that time. But there's many good classes. Thiophanic methyl may work if you still have, don't have resistance. The strobies are a good group. And again, they're safe in the summer. Um, as far as growth regulation um, impact, they'll be negative or be very minimal or none. Uh, the DMIs are some good ones, but again, they're growth regulators. So with heat, you have to be careful there. Um, and then, um, you know, there's uh, things like medallion, uh, the polyoxin, uh, D salts are good. I'd highly recommend considering those and rotating those in because, again, they do not cause growth regulation. As far as management culturally, the big keys are mowing. You got to raise the height, you got to be careful with mowing, not to scalp. And it explains more in here. Number two, 
fertility. You have to have adequate fertility. In my mind, a tenth of a pound of soluble N per week is probably too low. You're not going to regrow the grass adequately if you have thinning. Three would be water management, both extremes. You don't want poor drainage or too much water, but you don't want wilt. All those will lead to increased problems. So that's kind of an overview. Again, it's, it's a lot of information, and, and the handout has more, and other, there's other sources you can refer to. One other thing I really want to mention and, and kind of hone in on is if any of you, and I know many have, had thinning of greens due to winter conditions, different winter factors that cause thinning of turf or loss of turf. If you have situations like that and you have thinning of poa or you have new poa coming in or weak poa, you are really uh, in a situation of being quite vulnerable to this uh, anthracnose disease. So really be careful there. Um, you know, I'm not really a necessarily push a excessive use of fungicides, but now is probably the time to really be on a well thought out preventative program on those areas especially, because it's going they're going to be quite vulnerable and sensitive to this, and of course other diseases also. So keep that in mind in managing it. On the dollar spot side, I just want to mention uh, on greens where we've had concerns, again, we feel they've used chemistry that works on the dollar spot but they aren't getting growth and recovery. So if it's kind of eated, eaten out or kind of pitted, it may take a lot of work to uh, clean those up and get those to fill in if you're under growth regulation. So that's some, some kind of highlights on the, as far as high cut turf or lawns, um, you know, we're entering summer, there's a lot of dry conditions. Um, the big thing is if people are irrigating or watering, don't assume that the design of the system is perfect or working properly. Uh, check the soil, get the soil probe, a trowel, whatever. Um, you know, if things are fading in color because of the heat and maybe uh, running lean on fertility. But um, kind of the ho hump things in summer. When we, when we, one last point on home lawns is if you are spraying weeds, broadleaf weeds, um, be careful of drift and volatilization for you know, flowers, vegetables, things of that nature. So if you have questions, give us a call and have a good week.